Tosa Light Podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. This is Hotel Edition Podcast. The middle of our give back. We came with the team. Shout out to my boy, Pepe, for sitting in with me. Thank you for having me. It's been it's been a long, hot day. I thought San Diego was going to be cool. A little bit, little bit of wind, a little bit of breeze. Mario Verga. It's not that. It's like 100 degrees. Out. <laughs> it's like 100 degrees, but... We are here in San Diego right now because we came to do our first give back because of the money we've raised selling our first set of merch. I'm wearing the black one. Pep is wearing the white one. So every, for everybody that has bought one, thank you guys so much. I know today, shout out to Andersons for allowing us to give back to them. And, man, spread a little bit of joy. That was Seeing the look on their faces and seeing the look of other people's faces of getting something for free. Like, what the hell is this group of 10 people <laughs> giving out free waters and free sodas? So, It was crazy to see them actually so excited and so happy, you know? Yeah. We asked them, you asked them, how long have you been doing this? And the fact that it was their first day doing first it. Day. It just goes to show. You yeah. can change lives. It was, everything planned out. Everything worked out the way it was supposed to, even though. Sometimes I know we think it's going to only be one way, and when it doesn't go that route, we're like, damn, this this failed. But, again, you have to go back to things happen all for a reason. We went to Chicano Park, met a great a great human being in the lowrider scene, uh, Mr. George, went to Seaport Village. We thought we're, gonna, we're going to see the street vendors there. Didn't work out. We walked. All the way one side, all the way the other side. And when we came back, finally, we said, all right, these are the ones. All, right, they're, all they were doing is selling water, sodas, and Red Bulls. We took all the Red Bulls. That's, we have a lot of caffeine addicts in the group. So we took, Who took all, them all. Who took them all? I think that guy, I think his name is Jose Noe. I think he took a couple. And some girl called Giselle, I think. Yeah, I think, she I think she took some. Becca said one for the road, one for the, one for the room. And one for her tia and tío, so... Now, one of those was supposed to be for me, but I didn't get it. It's no. gone. It's gone. I chugged mine right before we started, so... She probably drank it. It's okay. But message there, especially, like, whether you give back to a street vendor, where you give back to the next, the person next to you, whether it's the person right behind you at Starbucks, whether it's the person ordering food after at the drive through at McDonald's or Jack in the Box, um, I think the way people say it is pay it forward. You know, a little act of kindness, a little a little act of giving someone a piece of grace. Like, first day on the job, and here we are blessing them, buying out their whole stand, let them go home. And she wasn't going home. She said she was going to go <laughs> right back to the store to buy some more. To she continue was like, selling all day. She, she was, was like, going to be there till 6 p.m. She was like, hold on, I'm coming right back. No, no, don't go. <laughs> don't go, because we're not going to be <laughs> we don't. We don't have it. But for everybody that is listening in again thank you on a monday we're gonna get this episode out on sunday or work on it on sunday to have it now that you guys are listening to it man life is good i think one of the questions that even uh, she asked us was how are you doing in life and the only thing i could really say is i'm blessed i got to wake up i'm around my friends i'm around loved ones i'm good everybody's healthy i have the opportunity to be great I cannot complain. Even though there's a lot of reasons to complain, there's a lot of moments that happen and be like, you know what? Today is just not the day. Fuck it. I'm just going to sit down, not do shit. We say, bro, like you have an opportunity. What's one bad moment that doesn't determine your whole day. And I think we maneuver pretty, pretty well in that. And even if we have a, a shit moment, we just say we move on. Don't let a couple bad minutes ruin an entire day. Hmm. Just can't, and then you can't you can't pass that over to the next person. Just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean you need to put that energy into the next person and let them also have a bad day. Like, if I'm not happy, you're not happy. Why? It's just contagious, you know. Yeah, energy is definitely contagious, and people have to realize what kind of room are they in, what kind of circle are they in, what's their environment that they're in. Are they going to an environment where they're not even loved or even liked? Or are they going to an environment where they're being embraced, where they're really asking you, how are you? They really care about your well-being, your mental health. Are you doing good in life? Is everything good? And if something is off, how do we, can we help? 
And I think that that's where a lot of people just mistake. They want they want people's love and affection when it's for the moment. It's fake. They don't know how to they don't know how to notice when it's real love and fake love. What's the other word? Lust? Yeah, I'm trying to figure that one out. Is it lust? We'll come back to it. Oh wow! Then I'm, I didn't I didn't put it in the right context. Bring out bring out the thesaurus. Um, we're gonna delete that part right there. Um, just cut it. Cut just it. cut it. No, but you have to stop searching for love from others when you don't even love yourself. Damn. What if I want validation <laughs> from who? Just people. But what if those people that you're trying to get validated from can't even validate themselves? Hey, but they're validating me in the moment. Mm. No, but I'm a, just kidding. I'm just. But kidding. the moment run, <laughs> but the moment runs out. That's the thing. I don't know. But that I've learned in these years of life, this and this journey, is I look for the validation and love from other people. That where are they now? Nowhere to be found. They never wished anything good on me. They only wanted me for a certain moment, which is either in the party scene, whether it's just to give them help. Help them, and when I needed help, who was there? I'll see you later. <laughs> Handful of people. Handful of people. What What did we just, uh, that video we just said, look for, look for friends that are willing to stand in the rain with you when they could have been. Dry themselves. Dry themselves. That part. You. Everybody has an option, but if you're going down, don't worry. Like, I'm going to be right there with you. You're not alone in this, and. People choose like really. People really choose when and when, when and should they be in people's lives. All right now, everything is glitz and glamour. Everybody, you're at the top. I'm there. And then when nothing's there, everything's going to shit. You need to retract a little bit. Where's everybody? Sorry, I missed your call. Sorry, I couldn't get to the phone. Hey, bro, I can't. I'm busy this weekend. It's like okay, cool. Now I know, I'm alone. So. You came up with some questions. I got questions for you. Oh. And it wasn't even just me. I literally asked, hey, what questions do you guys want to know? Mm. And some of these are mine. Some of them I Googled. And then some of them the people asked me to ask you. Oh, shit. You know, there's a couple, there's a couple good ones. They're not, that, they're not that bad. They're not that crazy. All right. Run it. Let's start with, let's start with an easy one. Wild in already, huh? Wild in already. What have been some of the happiest moments in your life and some of the saddest? Damn. One of the happiest moments in my life is when I became a dad. That has to be, hands down, the highlight of my life. Um, both when I had my son and when my daughter came into my life. Had to be the highlight of my moment of my life because... Man, I wasn't in the best position, especially when I had my when my son came in, in into the world. I was not in the best position uh, mentally and emotionally. And <laughs> fired, fired. He's fired, fired. We just talked about friends and being around. Huh? Cut him off. Just cut, cut him off, off already. Um, just cut the cord. <laughs> just cut the cord now. Hey, don't don't suffocate him over there. <laughs> Um, yeah, when my son came, came into my life, I was not in the best situation and it was just in a whole, in the whole spectrum right there. Uh, emotionally, physically, mentally, everything was, bro, I was probably in the midst of my worst, one of my worst depressions of, I didn't know my purpose. I felt like I was empty. I felt like I was giving free, filling up everybody else's cup. And when I get home or when I wake up, I'm just like another day. So I was just walking through life without a purpose. Lifeless, I guess you could kind of say, through the motion. And when he came into the world, I found my purpose. I have to be the best person and the best version of myself so I could be the best dad to him. And, I mean, going through growing pains. We talked about it pre before. I go through growing pains with my son because first-time parent, I don't know right, I know right from wrong, but... Sometimes what I feel is right is wrong to others. 
So going through the whole, everybody having an opinion, everybody implementing what they think is best. I'm My advice to everybody that's a first-time parent, going to be a first-time parent, or someone that is doubting themselves as parents, bro, show yourself a little bit of grace. Like, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen where you may not make the best decision, but you think and you do your best. You think that is the best decision at that moment. Your your kids are going to love you. Be there for your par- for your kids. Be there for, for your partner. Be there for yourself, first and foremost. And don't be too hard on yourself. Kid, kids are going to fall. <laughs> kids are going to cry. You're going to fall. You're going to cry. So things happen. Um, my saddest. Mm, saddest moment, I think. That I can probably losing my loved ones. Now it is. Because it wasn't just sad. It was hurt. Still hurting. But now I'm learning how to maneuver through the world using that hurt as fuel. So I don't sit in a dark room feeling bad about myself and asking why did this happen. I heard the other day, death is something that happens in life and not to life. And, you know, sometimes you will never understand. Sometimes you will never know why the reason it happened or why God took that amazing person first. But the way I like to put it, sometimes God needed them more than we needed them here. So, you know, remember them. Do what's right by them, by living up to their name, what what they thought was good. But, yeah, I don't know. Some of the saddest moments, I think that that it is. Get the happened about a couple times unfortunately is there one that hurt more than the others obviously they all hurt correct but is there one that hurt more than the others and is still hurting to this day Mm. damn yeah well i won't say still hurt i still hurt every day when you lose somebody you're you don't get over that ever Never. You just learn how to maneuver through life with that pain. Um, losing my uncle in 2015, you know, that's the first time I experienced losing somebody. So I masked that pain for as much as I can by going on long drives, literally doing everything to not feel that pain. You know, I, I don't remember too clearly, but I, in my terms, I blacked out for the, like the first two, three months. After that, it's just finding myself crying. And because I wasn't dealing with that pain, because I wasn't dealing with that hurt at that moment, then I self-destructed, fell into depression for the first time. I was like, why the fuck am I crying for no fucking reason? Why why do I get the urge to drive this fucking car at 120 miles an hour and just don't want to break? Why do I get the urge to just don't, I don't want to be here. I'd rather... I'm going to see you soon. I'd rather be up there with you instead of here. I didn't want to live. Like, I didn't understand that. Now it's like, I want to live. And I want to live for you. I'm going to make you proud. Even though you're not here physically, I know you're still here watching over not just me, but everybody that loved you and you loved. So I got to do what's right by you. So he talked about mental health. And we didn't know what mental health was back then. Now I get to tell people about mental health. Hey, you're sad? Is what what is it? Why do you deal with this? Why do you why do you feel this way? What gives you anxiety? What gives you depression? What is certain events in your life that's putting you in that bad spot every single time? So when I couldn't talk about mental health back then, because we didn't know as Hispanics, I said, Oh man, he's just going through something. Don't worry, he'll get up. Now we get to talk about it. Now it's like, oh shit, that's called that's called depression. Oh, that's called anxiety. Oh, okay. That's what it is. So other than talking about it, how else do you deal with that? How do you deal with your depression, your anxiety on a day-to-day basis? I, someone in this room, I think, can understand with me. I go and fight my demons in the best place where it's me versus me, and it's in the gym. I fight my demons where I know I could be my best, which is by myself, one on 1v1, in the gym, isolated, headphones on, 
it's me versus me. I'm not running away from my demons anymore. I used to. I used to say, nah, nope, I ain't going to deal with you today. And I just kept digging, digging that hole until I couldn't climb out no more. So kind of transferred into, like, having faith, right? People, when, again, I'm glad we just re I rewatched these videos right now that I showed you. I did everything for God not to love me. I did so much, so many things that I could have just been dismissed. But it never, even me doing those things, God never changed the way he felt about me. So what I had to do, I had to surrender. We just talked about it earlier. I needed to do my part. If he's going to show me grace, I need to do my part, not just wishing, not just asking. I tell a lot of people, when do you start talking to the higher power, whatever you believe in? Is it when you're in a dark place? When you have no, no, other, op no other option anymore? Or is it when you have good moments also? So that's where now, whether it's a bad day or a good day, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here and be great, for having the option, for having the opportunity to change my life. Today was a sign. We were looking for the, for the paletero the whole time. And when we found the Andersons, what happened? The paletero came. But it was, it was one of those things where it's like, no, we found the people we needed to. Things don't happen by mistake. Pe things happen for a reason. We all got here at a certain time. We all woke up a little bit later than, than we thought or we hoped for, for a reason. We're all here now. Why, why fight it? This is what's supposed to happen. So I, I fight my demons. I fight what I'm battling through. 1v1, me versus me. In the gym. When the, when the voices are screaming, screaming loud at me, nope, you ain't winning today. It's me. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you already mentioned it. One of the questions was, how did he come to your faith? Was it from family? Or was it from a partic uh, particular experience or set of experiences? Set of experiences. I think as being Hispanics, you know, that's one thing that it not pushed upon you, but the... Your family encourages it. You need to go to church. You need to do this. You need to follow this. I'll say this, and I'm very honest with it. You will find the moment the higher power reaches your life when you're ready for it. When you're ready to talk, when you're ready to listen, right? You have two ears and one mouth. That means you listen more than you talk. I needed to listen to those, to those voices, listen to the signs. I had to see the signs, like, he's going to give you all the, re all the moments in your life to, for you to be, hey, I got you right here. When you lose somebody, what does everybody do? Go pray. Why didn't you pray when you had a great moment? Why didn't you pray when you, when some, when you got that, that new job, that raise, an opportunity to even wake up? How many people don't wake up? So events in my life where I needed to understand, why am I sad? Why am I doing and giving to everybody and I'm still waking up empty? And then when I'm home alone, all the voices were screaming loud, and who was around me? Nobody. So, like I said before, at that point, the devil had won. That's it. I was alone. I can't, I'm weak alone. I can't, like, I couldn't function anymore. So I had to, my guy had my back. I had to surrender. I, I walk with God, bro. I, I promise you, I'm powerful. Because I walk in my purpose and I walk with God. I could walk alone right now on the street. Nope. You think I'm alone, but I'm walking with him. Whatever happens outside of here, I know God got me. Whatever my purpose is, I know he got me and he's going to lead me. But I got to do also my part by doing the right things, by saying and preaching and sharing the messages that I get from him, that I learned from, from life. There's one thing that I've heard before, never be ashamed to pray, never be ashamed to say that you pray. Never be ashamed about that. I used to, not no more. Now I encourage it. I hope one day you find the higher power, and I hope one day you feel what I feel. And what I, I feel power. I feel powerful with him. So, just events, bro. Events in your life that one day, on your own, not because your mom told you, not because you're... Significant other told you not because your tia, tío, grandma, no, just, nobody's gonna, no one's gonna be able to force that on you. You have to be willing to, and you have to 
welcome it with open arms. All right. So you and I talk on a pretty, pretty much on a daily basis. Daily basis. Other day you were asking me how my day was. Mm -hmm. And I told you, dude, I'm stressing. I'm stressed. Yep. The hell out. Yeah. And you said, pray, bro. Yeah. Pray. So now I came up with this question, right? Because I know for the past couple of months, and I'm going to say a couple of months, right? Just being honest, you've been pretty spiritual Mm -hmm. and you found God. Mm Mm-hmm. So now, this was my question. Have there been moments that tested your faith, right? Mm -hmm. And what were those challenges, and how did they impact your faith? When your faith gets tested is when nothing's going right. Nothing's going right. You're doing everything possible to do good. You're showing up. You're doing your job. You're being good to people. And when you feel alone is when you don't get that result back. So you ask yourself, why? Why not? Why Why me? Why is it only happening to me? So you question it like, damn, I'm doing all of these things, all these good things for other people, yet I get the shit out of the stick. Why? Why me? Why? So when that happens, when that happened to me, like I needed to understand and I need you, I need you to talk. Speak to the higher power. Okay, why is this happening? Can I control the event? Can I change it? If I do this, can I change the outcome? No. Let go, let God. I cannot change anything that's not in my control. So I, I, when I have those events on those moments, I have to realize that I can't control everything that happens in my life, unfortunately. I can't control how that person feels about me. I can't control how he, she, or them feel about me. But I can control how I feel about myself. I love myself. I love who I am. Again, if you guys are listening in, appreciate every single one of you guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The reminder, go watch all the other episodes that we drop gems because how we just said right now, the same person we are now, we weren't this. You know, a couple weeks ago, a couple episodes ago, we're always progressing. But there may be a gem, a gem or two in there that you may need to listen. So back to the program. Back to the program. Where are we picking it up at? No more religion. Let's 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 change the topic, just a little bit. All right, run it. Who has been the biggest influence on your life, and what lessons did that person or those people teach you? And it doesn't have to be a parent. It doesn't have to be a friend. Just anyone in general. Mm. Damn. What what was the word that Becca said that she mis mis said it? I can't say it. <laughs> I say it. I said that word earlier today, and let's just say she's strong for a little person. She is strong. Um, I, think I got a bruise or something. The most influential person in my life. I think when when we relate to being influenced, it can't just be a by one person. It's a sum of people. Because there's different stages of our life when we were kids to when we were in high school to when we're adults. We're some of everybody that's ever been in our life that made an impact, whether it's your dad, your grandpa, a coach, a mentor, friends, even friends that are not here anymore that taught you a lesson of how to do something, how to be a certain way. One thing that I've learned throughout every everybody I look up to one thing that I, I look up to everybody is everybody is true to, to themselves. Everybody goes and does what, what is needed of them in order to function. Take caring, taking care of their loved ones or their family or their friends, but putting themselves in positions that creates opportunity. This is a message to everybody. And one thing that if, if we can help you out with this, if you're right now in a, in a, position in your life where it's just foggy you can't see it clear life is unclear who you are may be unclear bro do what makes you happy be yourself be confident in yourself you may lose people along the way of that journey because they don't like who you are when you're shining be yourself the right people you will attract the right people will be a part of your life the right people will be in your life they would love to see you happy 
And the people that you need to lose will fall out on their own. You don't even got to do anything. The more you are yourself, the more they hate it. And once they hate you, they'll leave. And that's okay. So what do you do if they don't leave? How do you cut them off? Stop responding. <laughs> there, I literally, before, before we even started, somebody you had put in, you have to learn when to let go of certain things in your life that are, are not giving you anything anymore. And I'm not talking possession-wise. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about love, like true love. If I love you, I want the best for you. And if I love you, I'll do whatever I need to in order to help you succeed. Whether it's in business, whether it's in life, whether it's per personal. If I love you, I want all that for you and more. I need to, I want to win with my people next to me. Not me and friend and everybody. No, no, no. You have to recognize when, when you have takers around you. You have to recognize that. Takers prey on givers. And if you're a giver, no matter how much people use you, you're going to continue to give. You give people the benefit of the doubt. But you have to know when to stop. You're going to keep feeding that person over there that's just not giving you things. That's just using you. You got to learn when. And it's a hurtful thing. Letting go of the person you've been friends with for 20 years, 15 years, high school, high school elementary, or even family or cousins, it's going to hurt. Damn. I don't know, man. That person has done so much. Well, okay, what have they done now? What are they doing now that's putting you in the situation now that we're talking about it? Let go. Let go of that anchor in your life that's holding you back. As soon as you let go of that weight, I promise you, life goes fast. And you'll progress a lot faster. Damn, look at you. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Still got stuff to do. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Damn, that was a good. That was a good answer. Actually, how do you how do you let go of people that that you need to let go of, or how do you recognize that? It takes a while, but honestly, I just cut them off completely. And like you said, most people will fall off on their own, and that's happened before, and it keeps happening. And before, I used to be the type of person to go back to that person and beg to be in their life, yeah. but once I realized I had nothing to gain from them at all and they were just taking it was just easy it was just easy to cut them off there's a lot of snakes in your grass so you got to know when to cut it damn <laughs> damn Kevin Gates said it I just said it I just had to reiterate you got to tag him then yeah Kevin Gates shout out to him that's like even like when you get into problems when you're trying to get into an argument with somebody else or someone's trying to test you test your patience test your manhood whatever it is Whatever it is, let the clown have the circus. Kiss that fool in the forehead real quick. Piss him off even more. Piss him off even more. No, because what it is, if you entertain the clown, you become part of the circus. I cannot do that. As much as, no, you can, no, no, no. You're, you just become just the same as, same as them. But that point, how we're saying, cutting people off. There's a lot of snakes in people's grass in your own backyard that you got to cut off. And you notice it. You got the signs. The signs are there. They don't. They don't want the best for you. They wish the worst on you. You heard from that person and that person. They that they, they've been talking shit about you. Cut them off right now. If you're listening to this, pause the video. Go do that right now. Text them. Text you're them. You're cut off. Bye. See you later. Wish the best for you. But do it right. Do it right. You're just tell them. Hey, this is what you did. Right. You tell them what they did wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you block them after. That's it. Don't know block them when it. you're drunk. You ended it. That's and, it. And that, that goes and that goes for relationships too. Oh, relationships, friendships. What every type of what about family? Everything. Every relationship possible. Friends, family, girlfriend, boyfriend, the Sancho, the Sancha, it don't matter. Cut them off. <laughs> if it's not feeding you no more, cut them off. It sounds like some of y'all are gonna get cut off. I know it. If you not cause, not, cause, not me, I'm not kidding. <laughs> if I'm not if your message off. starts going green, it's because they heard the same message and now you can't reach them. <laughs> or they probably got an Android now. If you got an, <laughs> they switched no, to don't Samsung. Do that. I don't I'm know. sorry. <laughs> this episode is not sponsored by Samsung, but, but or Samsung, Apple. Samsung, but. if you want to reach out, Samsung, I'm down for a year, bro. If you're down, <laughs> or two, hey, longevity. You got to pay the bills. Uh, or 
Apple. Or Apple. Nah, they're too big. It's okay. One day, one day. One day. You have a, another question? I, can I hit you with one? Damn. I'm asking you the questions okay. today. No, I'll no, no. Quiet. You know what? No, no, no. Hit me. Hit me. Go. Okay, so we talked about faith. We talked about friends, uh, letting go of people. How do you, if you're struggling right now, how do you get to the stage of your life where you become happy again? I'm happy right now. But for those people that aren't happy, Mm -hmm. I think having the right people around you helps a lot. Uh, Everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was it? I probably joined the podcast crew about a year. There you go. year yeah, just yeah. about a year, a little bit over a year. And I didn't tell anybody, like, just reached out just very casually, right? And I was I was sad. I was in a, I, I was sad. I was in a dark place. Not like the darkest I've ever been, but I wasn't in a right space mentally, right? Yeah. I joined obviously little by little, we became closer. Everybody in the pod. Now everyone in the pod or a part of the pod are probably my best friends, you know? And I think that's gotten me out of the funk that I was back, what, yeah. maybe a year ago? Surround yourself with amazing people. and that's You have to. And that goes for everything. Your life, your life will change when you change the environment. And that's happened. Opportunities present themselves. Now it's more of a, do I take that chance? Or Yeah, people don't grow because they don't want to. They have every opportunity, every sign, every everything in, in, in life to, hey, this is your next step. And because they just don't want to outgrow those people or their circle that may get lost, uh, you know, not the time, not right now. But that's the thing. When is the right time? How do you know when the right time is? Because there's been opportunities that I've passed up, that I passed up before joining the pod, right? And the older I've gotten, yeah, I mean, there's there's times where I question, like, what if? But ever since I've joined the pod, I've literally have taken every chance that's presented itself. Not, I'm not going to say no anymore at all. Not every, not every, uh, not every chance is the best one, right? Not every opportunity is the best one or not every opportunity is the one for you. But you have to know when to take it. When you have that itch inside you, when you have that, like, oh, what if this does work? What if this, stop living life on the what if part. Just do it. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're back to where you were before you even tried. Exactly. Simple as that. Simple as that. Stop leaving it for the next day or tomorrow or in the week or in the month when things are better. Yo, right now it's good. Right now, be who you are. Be in, be in your zone. Try it out. What's the worst that's ever going to happen? You fail? Cool. Now you learn something. It's not a failure. It's not a loss. It's a lesson. Take the lesson and move on. People got to figure that out. When? Well, it's because... No, I don't want to hear your fucking excuse. I want to hear your solution to this. How can we be better? How can we get better? How can you do better? Give me your solution. If you don't want to, that's on you. But don't hate yourself in six months because you did not take that opportunity when it presented itself. Oh, well, it's because my family or because of th- your family is not going to be living your life in your shoes, in your bed. They're not the ones going, getting up every morning and going doing what you need to do. You're not going to make everybody happy. Learn that now. Everybody needs to learn. Everybody needs to learn. Everything you do in your life from here and to the day that you're called up to the heavens, you're going to do things that doesn't make everybody happy. But as long as you're happy, you're good. You're good. Live your life without the what if part. Life changes. What if? Mm, I don't believe that no more. Exactly. You can't. Now it's a, oh, no, we did do that. It just didn't work out. <laughs> right? We, le- we didn't fail. We didn't right. fail. We took the lesson. We learned the lesson. We learned the sure. lesson. Um, but yeah, the happiness part, surround yourself with the right people, be in the right environment. And if you hate your job right now, <laughs> change it. That wasn't meant for me. It wasn't meant for him. It wasn't meant for me. I no, love my job. I, 
there's people because the reason I say that's because there are people that sh- that when they show up to work, whether it's at a restaurant, or whatever, and they have a face that like, mm. like bro, why are you here then? If you hate being here, why are you here? Change your attitude. Live life. It's a happy day. It's a sunny day. You woke up. You woke up. You got a job. You got a job. It's Friday. I ain't Friday got shit today. to do. I ain't got no job. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Questions, bro. Questions that are, again, helping out not just ourselves but others. Um, here is a good question that you wrote and that you got through this week for us. Would you describe yourself as a happy child? Were you happy and are you happy now? That's you're answering that question because I came up with it, but I'll, I'll answer it. I'll, <laughs> no, I'll answer it shortly. But uh, how would I describe myself as a child? Honestly, I was I was pretty reserved. I was pretty quiet. I was a little nerd in school, pretty much all the way from as long as I can remember. In regards to being happy. I can say, damn, I wasn't the happiest kid. Um, growing up, didn't really have the best relationship with my dad. Mm. So then, obviously, as a child, you see other parents, other dads, like, having fun with their kids. Yeah. My dad was, wasn't really around. And I get it. I mean, he worked early, uh, late, and then, obviously, you do what most Hispanic parents do after work. Drink a beer or something. Crack open a cella. Ask me to come in. That's it. Watch TV. So I never really got to. I never really got to see him. But um, in regards to being happy, I mean, my mom was always there for us. Yeah. Um, we experienced happiness like with her pretty much. And then I can't. I can't really knock my dad for for it. He was supporting us. He was doing the best he could with what he had at the moment. Yeah. So has that uh has that. I deleted the question on there. Sorry. No, you didn't. I swear to God. Why would you delete it? Because you're answering it. What was the other part? Um, are you happy now? Oh, yeah. I'm happy now. Yeah, you answered that part. Yeah, right? I answered that part. Yes, yeah. I'm happy now. But it took a while to get there, right? Progress. And then a thousand percent. And it was my happiness. I could My happiness couldn't be dependent on other people. I had to realize that my happiness was dependent on myself. And find happiness in others because they may not even be happy themselves. That's right. What What was that? Uh, I think we heard it last week. I'm waiting f- for that person to love me when that person doesn't even love themselves. Yeah, but you can't love someone else if you don't. You can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. Yep, that part. For the people that didn't hear, you can't love yourself unless you can't love others unless you love yourself. That's right. I don't know, man. Come. To the point of, like, the question you just said, the confidence. Bro, be 100% in your shit. Be 100% in you. You are for you. You don't, you, don't have, you don't have to be for everybody. You are for the right person. You are for the right people. If other person, if other people don't like it, so be it. It is what it is. If you don't like something about yourself, go and change it. Yeah. Whether it's a physical, whether it's mentally, whether it's emotionally, there's time to progress. There's time to work on you. And the best time to do this, how we said this whole podcast, is right now. Not tomorrow, not not in a week, not in the month, not next year for New Year's resolution. It's just right now. If you're if you're ready to quit every time you start, then why are you even starting at the beginning? If you're ready to quit on whether you quit if you quit on anything, that means it, it never meant anything to you. I love this way too much, that's why I never quit. And I think that's where the love comes in, into play. The passion comes into play. How much it means to you comes into play. And one thing I tell tell people, if you're ready to quit, who are you doing it for? Oh, I do it for my mom, my dad, my parent, whatever. Well, if you're ready to quit, then you don't love them. If you're ready to quit, you're quitting on them. So that's one thing people got to think too. But, man. What? So Speedo, man, breathe. People forget to take that breath. And I cough. (laughs) 
People forget to take a breath, man. Life is life is fast. Life is tough. Life is life is what it's always gonna be. It's gonna test you. It's gonna give you highlights. It's gonna give you low moments. But it's how you deal with those low moments. Low moments that make who you are. Get through the storm. The storm isn't forever. Maybe for the moment. Maybe for a day, a week, a month. But I promise you're gonna get through it. Work on you. Do it. Go through that storm. Don't be afraid. Go battle your demons. You will win. Don't let them win. You versus you. Ain't nobody else. You versus you. Take a breath. Be proud of yourself. Be proud. That's that. That's where everybody needs to get from this podcast. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of how far you came. Be proud of where you started and where you are now. And be proud and be happy that you have an opportunity to be a better version of you. Breathe. It's life. I just took a deep <laughs> breath, guys. That's right. That's your sign. Go breathe. <laughs> Fucking hey. ASMR over here. <sighs> yes, guys, I'm o- yes, guys, I'm overweight. Just cut, <laughs> That's that, part this just cut that part out. Dude, <laughs> re- it's hot in this room. I already hear Jose. Toby. Okay, he didn't want to hook it up with a uh, gym membership. No, Jose is the worst trainer in the world. Jose, no way, said he only cares nope. about himself. But that's good. Look at him. Look at him. Take I him. I was buff like him. I wish I was buff. I wish I was able to wear hoochie daddy shorts like that. I can wear them. They just don't look that good. Conf- oh my God. <laughs> He's uh He drank all the Red Bulls. You can tell. He <laughs> gave him wings. I think Becca gave him mine. Man, is there any uh, any message you want to you want to give out before we end this? No, I don't. Is there a message you want to give out? You have a quote of the day, please. A quote, a quote. Enjoy every day you wake up, because a lot of people don't get that opportunity. Damn, that was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> What about you? Um, if I could give anybody that a message to everybody and anybody that's listening right now. Damn. What is that? I'm proud of you. If you haven't heard it, if you haven't heard it enough or just yet, I'm proud of you. You are amazing. You're doing great. I know some days are tough. I know some days you feel like you're not enough. I promise you, you are. So show yourself that little piece of grace. Show yourself that that, that little moment of happiness. And choose you. It's kind of it's what it is. It is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. <laughs> and it'll be what it'll be, and it won't be what it won't. <laughs> It's a live podcast, baby. Most organic. We out.